Hi, this is Bart from the NoPod Project at NoPod.org. Today we're here at Round Earth Organic Farms with Adam Silverstein. Hi, Adam. Hi, Bart. And Adam's going to take us on a tour of his organic farm and teach us some of the tricks that he uses to grow crops without pesticides or fertilizers. Now, most people, when they keep chickens, they may not even have a chicken coop. But if you do build a chicken coop, you can build a roosting pit and you get all the manure. Ah, the very cool. So, ours is kind of fancy, but it doesn't have to be this fancy. Okay. It could be a lot simpler. So there's some checks to it. So there's the roosting pit in there. You can see all the manure that's accumulating there. And that okay. is great fertilizer. So basically, if you look around in this room, that is the only spot the chickens have to sit. Even, well, other than the nesting boxes. But if you look like above the nesting boxes, how we did that slope over there, that's so they can't sit up there. Oh, I see. So they really spend all their time when they're in here sitting over there. Okay. And that's why all the manure accumulates over there. And then there's a trap door or something. There's that... a trap door on the outside of the building. You lift up and you can shovel that manure out. Okay. How long does it take to collect that much. I mean, that's like a year. That's a year. Okay. I mean, it depends on how many chickens you have, and but supposedly they're they're like seventy to eighty percent or more of their manure is being dropped right there. Okay. But and that manure is pretty concentrated. Very concentrated, hot fertilizer. You probably want to let it sit for a while, or compost it before you used it. Okay. Um, and but so you composted that for a year. How much coverage would you get out of that much? Fertilizer. Well, I mean, usually when I'm spreading it, I'm just spreading like a quarter inch, you know, on the surface of the soil or 500 pounds per acre. Okay. You know, is a, is a ratio. But you don't really use a whole lot of it. Uh, so it goes away. It goes a long way. Let's go around back here and see our trap oh, door. Yeah, see the trap door. Okay. Bulging. Look. <laughs> yep. <Yeah. laughs> nice. <laughs> Looks like they're supposed to be another one. And then they've got a little uh, door that they can get in and out of here, huh? Yeah, they do. They've got their own little run that they can use. And then they probably can't get over the four-foot fence out here. No, you know, some of them actually can crawl through the little, like, the, I've seen some of them push through the, the openings, Okay. But no, and they probably could fly over it if they really wanted to, but they're, they're not really that interested in escaping. If you were like in there chasing them and they took off, they could fly over the edge because I haven't clipped their wings or anything to prevent them from flying. Okay. So. And how many chickens do you have? I think I've got 18 right now. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. And they eat all of our scraps too. That's one of their big jobs on the farm. All the vegetable scraps. So we're processing the veggies. All the scraps go over there, and then they just wind up chowing down on those. Nice. I'm gonna have to empty that thing soon. Bulging. <laughs> and you just bring your tractor over with the bucket to. For the scraps. Or for oh, the... for that, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would probably just load it right in the tractor, and then and then go dump it in a pile and mix it up every once in a while. Nice. Yep. What other things do you use for soil amendments? You know, chicken manure is really the big one that I've used, and, and I've also hauled in chicken manure from chicken farms around here. Okay. Um, the the Del Mesa people, they sell this composted chicken manure that I bought like 10 years ago. It's just been sitting in a pile. Um, I also have a lot of deer and elk that come through here in the winter, so they're contributing. You know, you can actually you see the pellets right there. Oh, yeah. Um, so I leave my veggies, my veggie crop standing, by the middle of October, we're kind of done with harvest, and the deer now start moving down as the hunters move into the high country, and they come down here, and they spend a lot of time just chowing down on the, the remnants of the veggies, you know, Yep. and leaving their fertilizer for us. Very nice. So that's part of it. Um, and then, 
I'm kind of a big believer in just sort of taking care of your soils. And that if you have healthy soils that most, for the most part, most soils have a lot of the nutrients that the plants need. And a lot of times when you have poor growth, it's because plants can't get at the nutrients that they need. Okay. Um, so a lot of times just by working your soils, by tilling them, by irrigating them well, in our case irrigation, um, spreading some manure, um, you'll, you'll start to improve the soil over the years of just, just the factor of aerating them, you know, just tilling them, growing some kind of a crop, even if you're just growing a cover crop, like a, a crop that's just to improve the soil. Okay. Um, you know, sometimes I'll plant a ryegrass or clover or alfalfa, and then later in the season, just mow that down or till that back into the soil. Okay. And that process kind of helps rejuvenate the soils. And so part of what I'm doing is I've got, you know, 15 acres, but I'm maybe growing veggies on five acres. And, and the other acreage each year is, is either fallow, it's unused, or it's got some kind of a cover crop that's growing in it to improve the, so, improve the soils. Um, so, and I, and I sort of have this slow approach. I'm not real big on fertilizers. I kind of feel like the chemical fertilizers tend to pump things up. They increase the amount of water that the plants uptake and the crop gets bigger, but I don't think it necessarily makes it taste better. And I don't think that uh, if, if you're not in a hurry, then you get the same kind of yields without the chemical fertilizers. Um, it just takes a little, maybe a little bit longer for the plants to reach maturity. But I think they're healthier. I think sometimes if your plants are growing too fast, they're weak.